Howard Lutnick's with me, Chief Executive of Cantor Fitzgerald. Uh, I agree, but we've had a good run-up since the beginning of the year, and it was perhaps time for a pause. But the numbers from Goldman and from JP Morgan and others, there's, they're not performing at peak. Well, they're just not doing the deals they did in 2021 and 2022. Come on. They're just not going to do the deals. The end of 2022 was not deals. Their traders made a bundle. They made a bundle because, let's face it, we both know the stock market S&Ps at 4,000 seems a little pricey. So I think a little pressure pushing it down makes a lot of sense. Okay, but they're doing deals. Sorry, they're doing trades on the back of volatility. Correct. Oops, good Lord. <laughs> a volatile <laughs> iPad. <laughs> I don't think that's happened before. <laughs> you see what you've done to me? They're, they're doing trading on the back of volatility, commodity volatility, yield volatility, all as a result. Correct. Because inflation, remember, when interest rates were zero for the last 14 years, come on, trading was kind of dull, right? What are you going to do? Trade against zero? Now that there's rates again, 5% interest rates coming in America, there's lots to trade. These banks are going to make a lot who of money are they trading. Tra they're trading for who? Who's, who's most interested in these deals? See, what used to happen is you would sell Coke and your salesman would say, do you want to buy Pepsi? You could pick up two basis points and everyone would take out their pillow and go to sleep. Now you can make 25 basis points, 50 basis points. The traders and the salesmen are on fire at these banks and they're going to make a lot of money, a lot of money. And so are you because you're a trading firm. Well, it's wonderful for us. We like rates. You know, it's okay. Hey, thank God we're not at zero anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many people that will come on and extol the virtues of higher interest rates. Well, look, zero was weird, right? Can you imagine we Necessary. had a $31 trillion deficit in America and zero interest rates. Come on. That seems weird. That seems strange. And it just doesn't seem like it's going to stay. So if you now take the market and the volatility, where does that Dow go this year? Where does it, do we trade sideways? You know, I'm so sad to say we go nowhere. Sideways. We creep lower, probably 3,800, something totally boring. And I'm sorry, because we want to talk about fun things, but I just think the stock market's going to be boring. Boring. But what, I mean, but things are, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know. Like, so here's one of my favorites. They, they, talk, they talked about inflation, right? Inflation. At the end of this year, 2023, there's, I heard, and this was my favorite here, that inflation was going to go really lower because, here's an example, used cars went up 50%. Now, they're only up 40%. See? Inflation's getting better. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is crazy. But that's what's going to happen. So he's going to see this inflation bouncing around. Oh. But in the end, inflation is going to stick with us. Do you think, ah, do you think the Fed sticks to its game down to 2%? Or do you think at about 3%, they say, well, that's We're never getting to 2%. Where does 2% come from? 2% is gone. Forget it. No, I Forget don't. Forget it. Forget it. It's not happening. Really? It's not happening. No way. I think rates stay higher. They stay higher all year long. And that's what's going to happen. The beauty of having you on the program is you really are the guest for all seasons. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we talk about most things. The debt ceiling, which is being hit this week at 31.4 trillion or whatever. Janet Yellen is taking, you're looking at me very oddly. Janet Yellen is already doing extraordinary measures. Are you worried? Well, because the, the Republicans and the Democrats are going to start fighting over it again. Just like the same movie we saw a couple of years ago, same fight again, same nonsense again. Imagine the U.S. shouldn't pay its debt because they're fighting. That's two weeks' time. That's what we're going to read about all the time. Just fighting. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Would you like to come to the... I've got a, a black or... Sorry, I've got a, a blue or... You know, when I come on your show, I know what to do. I brought a black pen because I like to live oh, in wait, the wait, black. Is that mine or yours? Well, it's yours. I stole right, it from you. Right, right. I want to make sure you're not about to use a permanent marker. No, no, no. It's yours. It's yours. Right. So, Come over here, sir. So here's my deal. Oh. I think inflation is the driver of all these things. It right. drives global recession, but it's only small potatoes. Only small. We're not getting big recession. There's no black swan out there. Small potatoes. Energy crisis driven by inflation. More energy crisis, more inflation. China reopening. They start buying more oil. More inflation. Democracies really... We're not going anywhere. Come on. Doesn't it feel pretty good here? And inequality as a fundamental worry? 
I mean, I don't think it's going to change the global economy. And we employ, you know, billions of people on the earth. And I just don't think inequality is going to be the thing that we should worry about in 2023 as a driving force compared to global recession, inflation, energy crisis, China reopening and democracy. Just as well, our last guest isn't here to hear you say, my pen back, please. Good to see you. Great to see you. Really good to see you. Thank you, sir. Very grateful indeed.